I'm Sir Tap Tap, and Pokemon Rumble Rush just came out. It's a mobile kind of, you know, entry in the Pokemon Rumble series. It functions very much like earlier Pokemon Rumbles. Um, it does have some more free-to-play bits in it, but we'll get to that in just a sec. So, point number one, gameplay is pretty much automatic. Things are pretty simple. It's very much like previous Pokemon Rumbles. Um, the biggest thing is gear in this game, generally speaking. Um, fact number two, Pokemon so far are either from Kanto or evolve into or from Kanto Pokemon. So Pokemon like Politoed or Magby are in, but Gen 2 exclusive stuff like Hoot Hoot and stuff are not in. Uh, there will be po other non-Kanto Pokemon in the future, it looks like, because they've, you know, advertised it with some other stuff. That brings us to number three, or is your main free-to-play hook in this, unfortunately. So, or is basically a loot box that you have to wait to open. That isn't that joyful. So this one doesn't seem too bad, 30 minutes. Um, the actually good ores that you get take 10 hours to crack, though. So that is your main free-to-play hook. Be aware of that. If that sounds bad, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, fact number four, gears, which are drops from the ore, you know, from the loot boxes, are basically re hard required to play the game to, uh, to progress at a reasonable rate. Um, I'm not super far in the game, as you might be able to tell. Um, I have heard from people that have played it a bit more obsessively than I, you know, people without jobs and such, um, that the progression does get pretty slow and you do end up waiting for gear a lot. And so, again, keep that in mind. Um, point number five, um, the Pokemon you catch are not Gashapon, basically. Um, you can focus on which area to go, you can, um, there's a random chance to catch them, but if you've unlocked a stage with a Pokemon, you can be pretty sure to get it within a reasonable amount of time. So, not Gashapon, loot boxes. Kind of minor difference, but thought I put out, that out there. Number six, um, I have a guide for this game already, and um, it's still in the process of being written, but that guide will be kept up to date, unlike this video, which I can't update, because, you know, it's a video. Um, number seven, this is a weird one, uh, kind of caught me off guard, but um, Pokemon have to be acquired three times to um, register them in the decks sometimes. Some of them only once. In fact, I'll show you this right now. Some of them... Like, Ivysaur evolved the way it is, is rare, quote-unquote, Pokemon, like, uh, Abra. Pokemon that don't evolve, like, say, like, Absol and stuff, those take three. Um, middle evolutions and later evolutions seem to take three. I, it's, it's weird, but just, if you don't see a Pokemon registered, that's why you need to catch three for some reason. Fact number eight, there are no shinies in this game, there are Pokemon that sparkle, and that just means that if you defeat them, they're a guaranteed catch but it does not mean that they're shiny. Uh, as far as we can tell, there are no shinies in this game. Fact number eight, um, this game is basically purely on an event schedule. Once you beat the tutorial, you are put into a time-limited set of areas that um, have a set amount of Pokémon. Currently, only the Kanto ones, like I mentioned before. And, um... Did I pick Caterpie for a fire type? Good, good, good. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, um, yeah, you can't really choose which region, so it seems like every two weeks, at least the current one lasts for two weeks, um, you'll get a different region and different Pokemon you can catch. Um, so you're kind of at the developer's whims in a lot of ways in this game. Uh, fact number 10, in-app purchases are all temporary boosts in this game. There are not, it's not like Pokemon uh, quest that had those nice bundles that have permanent boosts, and once you buy three of them, you've basically bought the game. There's not, you know, anything left to buy. No, it's all about buying the loot boxes, so... <laughs> I'm not excited about I was really interested in this because Pokemon Quest, in my opinion, had a pretty good monetization scheme. You, you pretty much paid a reasonable amount, and then you got a thing, and you were done. This game, it does seem to be of the loot box open a lot variety, so. Also, fact number 10.5, um, the, this is probably just because of the regional test thing, but, um, if you look in the shop, the dollar amounts, or the points per dollar amounts, are off. So each of these items, if you take a quick look, it's, it's 100 diamonds for 
worth one for per dollar. No matter how many you get, there's no bonus. But if you do points per dollar, it looks like there's a crazy bonus. That's... Um, they should really fix that soon, because that's the kind of thing people get sued over. Uh, I'm gonna assume that's an error, but yeah. Anyway, that's a quick look at the game, some stuff you might want to know. Um, again, guide in the description, I'll be trying to keep that updated, and um, hope you enjoy. Tap tap here. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you want. I read every comment posted, so don't embarrass yourself. Social media links in the description, including my Patreon, and any relevant links to the game.